In this short but sweet midweek offering to the YouTube gods, we try and rip these apart. This series is the story of the new amphibious Arctic vehicle project named Bernard. Building on ideas, skills and questions raised during the Allen lifeboat conversion, as a team we will share all those moments needed to get Bernard up north, onto the ice and making himself useful. Clearly there's been nothing of any importance in the news over the past weeks or months and everyone who's anyone has been talking about the uh, interlaminate strength of composites and I mean everyone. So for that reason I'm doing this emergency episode to make sure that we can answer that question for good. Now I've got a whole load of test laminates here, they're all double ply. I think they all are. No, one of them is triple ply, but I'll, I'll explain why in a second. And it's going to be covering a load of different combinations of composite, which are candidate options for different parts of the skin that's going to become the shell of the Arctic vehicle that is Bernard. And I will take you through the ones I've got now, and then voiceover Alex will explain, first of all, the results, and also why it is included in the test, and why potentially I've not included other ones in the test. This first one is two plies of dialin. So this is one of the um, the tough impact resistant additions that you can put within composites. You don't tend to make composites purely of dialin. You can, but it's unusual. Um, this one is two plies of the same. And then this next one is two plies of Inegra, which as you'll also know if you listen to my channel a lot, it's a similar sort of thing, less dense, uh, slightly stretchier, uh, slightly less strong, uh, but that low density makes it very, very popular. You'll also probably notice that uh, with these white fabrics, so with both dialin and Enegra, the resin does send it a rather sort of murky, beigey color. It's not particularly attractive, but I guess we're not in this for uh, aesthetics, are we? Anyway, so this one is just two plies of Enegra, seeing how well they hold together. This one is Enegra again, but it is co-mingled with carbon. And co-mingled means instead of it being a hybrid weave where you get one uh, coherent uh, strand, one coherent warp or weft, of carbon and then one of an egra. They're all just mixed together in a, in, in a completely chaotic ja uh, jumble, which I assume, and I, I did check with an egra about this actually a couple of uh, years ago, it is supposed to be a uniform uh, distribution of the two types of fibers so that you end up with a predictable performance from the laminate that you get. So again, this one is two plies of the same material. That is our co-mingled carbon and negra. And then this is also carbon and negra, but this one is the hybrid weave. It's not actually uh, completely symmetrical. So the zero and the 90 ply are actually not the same. In one direction, you get twice as much carbon as a negra, and the other one, you get twice as much a negra as you get carbon. So the mechanical properties of this, depending on which way you orientate the fibers, will vary. But for this test, it should not make a difference. So again, that's just two of the same material. Uh, and negra and carbon. This is where we start mixing them. On this one, I've got pure carbon on one side, and on the other side, uh, this one is, I can see by the shape of the weave, this one is the negra, so it's pure negra on one side and pure carbon on the other. So we want to see, for this one, how easy it is to separate uh, pure negra, which is bonded to pure carbon. Same story with this one with the dial in, so pure dial in on one side and pure carbon on the other. And then this is the test which you will probably recognize from the pontificating I've been doing before regarding uh, the idea of using carbon almost like as a ripstop. Uh, you, you know how in fabrics in polyesters and nylons you use a ripstop material to arrest uh, either a tear or, or, or a separation of some sort. I'm seeing if it's possible here. So this is actually a triple ply. There's carbon on both sides, which is in this area here and that area there bonded to itself. So it's carbon against carbon, which we know produces a very, very, very strong bond to itself, a bit like glass fiber does as well. They really enjoy creating strong interlaminar um, uh, bonds. But then I put two strips of Enegra here and here. And that will mean that hopefully when we get to the part where they are actually bond together, I'll tell you a bit more about how I've uh, set the method up in a second, that should separate across the Enegra relatively easily because we know and we predict that Enegra uh, doesn't tend to bond to carbon as strong as carbon bonds to carbon. But then there will be the end of that Enegra section and a bit where it goes carbon and carbon again. That may, I'm predicting, that may arrest 
the, uh, the ability for me to separate it. Then there's another section of Inegra to test it again, and then again at the other end, uh, at the base here, that should then be very, very strong, almost impossible to separate. We'll see how that one goes. You probably notice that you can, you can separate these quite, quite easily for the first half, but then the second half is bonded. And I've done that on purpose. When I did the layup, I put some, um, some uh, resin phobic paper. It was, uh, this was just baking paper. I put that in the middle when I laid up the two sides so that they couldn't bond to each other. And that gives me an ability to get a good grab of both sides as I, as I try to cause the peeling action. So we'll see how that one goes. And it's going to be helpful for me to know because I know I'm going to be involving either Dialin or Onegra in this layup, it will help me to work out a strategy to make sure we don't, that we don't get delamination within the two skins either side of the foam core. Bonding to the foam core itself is another conversation that we'll have later, but I want to keep this one fairly, uh, fairly focused. Right, let's see what happens. It's worth saying from the start, a peel test is very tough on flat laminates, even harder than a sheer delamination test if you want to really torture into laminate adhesion. Polypropylene is a fairly low surface energy plastic, but Onegra has been cleverly modified. This I'd grade a medium difficulty separation. Not too shabby. Polyester is higher energy in comparison, but with these patented specialist fabrics, you never know what norms might not follow through. So that was easier than the Enegra. That really does come apart quite easily. A good example, Dialin's interlaminate adhesion with epoxy is truly poor. Now for a test of an interface that might actually play a part in my project. Yeah, that was about the same as Enegra to Enegra. I'm not sure if this is praise for the Enegra to Enegra or disappointment in this test, but logically it does make sense. You can make out the rough fractured epoxy on the faces. No fabric fibers were harmed in this experiment. Let's do the same with dial into carbon, the same dial in that did badly on the solo test. Ooh. It's a slightly better bond. That was interesting, the dial-in bonds to the carbon, I mean not particularly well, but uh, that's not as bad as it could have been. Well, that's a surprise, a positive one as I have a soft spot for dial-in. To the intra-laminar hybrids, this one the traditional bundled hybrid. So there is some carbon to carbon bond here. That came away pretty easily. Interesting. I'd say a poor result, given that there's plenty of carbon surface area bonding to more carbon fibre there. Now the other hybrid, where carbon and polypropylene is all jumbled up. And this is the commingled and commingled, so again, lots of carbon touching carbon here. This might snap, actually. Again, that came away from itself really rather easily. Weirdly, that was easier than the, en than the Enegra Enegra and the Dialin Dialin. Again, lots of potential for carbon to carbon interlayer bonding, but a fail. I've never liked this fabric, to tell the truth. I've never chosen it for a project. Now for the main course. Okay, this is the, the experimental one, so this is going to be, first of all, carbon from a negra that we know will come apart. But will it stop when it gets to the carbon? Ah, the carbon fails. As is a predictable issue in pure carbon bending tests. Let's see if I can get this. now nothing really to grab onto. So 
So, the carbon pulled away from the Enegra as seen earlier, but after I cleared away the fractured carbon and got a grip of the next section, it pulls away from the carbon, in my estimation just as easily as the Enegra. So, the break in the Enegra is not acting as a ripstop. This is disappointing but may simplify the layout recipe I choose. Tell me your reaction. As expected? Shock, surprise and pure awe? By the way, my finding is supported by the observations of this study. It turns out plain ply sandwiches of various composites can really outcompete the snazzy looking hybrid ones. I also just found this study which suggests that if you add some silicon carbide powder to your epoxy resin, you might be able to improve the interlaminar adhesion. So we maybe can try that in the future. Now, don't tell me that wasn't exciting. Bye.